I swore it would never happen to me. I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't grow up around church stuff at all. Uh, but I had friends once I became a Christian who were pastor's kids and missionary's kids. When I went to college, I was around a lot of PKs and MKs, these kids that grew up in the church. And some of them were so bitter at the church and so bitter at their parents and ultimately bitter at God because their parents were removed. They were overwhelmed by the church and they weren't there for their family. And so I swore this will never happen to me. When I get married someday, when I have kids someday, when I'm doing ministry someday, I'm going to get it balanced and I'm going to do it right. Now I'm married. Now I'm in ministry. I have I have three boys. They're, I think they're about 12, 10, and 8 years old. And we're away on a family vacation. Great ski vacation. Wonderful, good time. And one evening I'm working. I'm on vacation. I brought work with me. Every night I was working when the kids were in bed. I took my work with me on vacation. Should have been a sign. It wasn't, but it should have been a sign. And so I'm working. And I was working on a study with another pastor. And the pastor talked about how, how he had committed to be home four nights a week. And when he went home from work, he'd stay home at least four nights so he can be there for his family. And, and it struck me. So I commented to my wife later that evening. I said, honey, uh, I was thinking about what this pastor said and this study that we're working on. And, and I'm going to make that commitment. I think I'm going to try to be home four nights a week. I, and then I said to her kind of off the cuff, I said, because if I'm not careful about that, I could be back at the church every night of the week. And she looked at me very kind of casually and kindly. And she said, well, you are. And I very graciously said back to her, no, I'm not. And she, uh, she looked at me and she said, well, no, you, you're, you work seven days a week and you work seven nights a week. And I said, no, I don't. And she said, yes, well, yes, you do. And we went back and forth. And finally, I kind of stormed out of the room to get my calendar. And this was back in the paper calendar days before it was all on a phone. And to get my calendar and to, to prove her wrong. So I got my calendar out and I turned back a week. And every day I was at the church and every night I was back at the church. And I went another week and I had to go back three weeks till I could find one night that I wasn't back at the church with a meeting, with counseling, with uh, something going on, or just back at my desk working. And I had this, this moment of truth where the Holy Spirit just humbled my heart. And I walked back in the other room, and instead of trying to prove myself right, I confessed to my wife that I was wrong. Uh, with, with, it, it broke me with tears. I said, I said, Sherry, I swore this would never happen, and it's happened. And I'm so sorry. The next morning when our boys got up, I apologized to all three of them. And I told them, Dad's going to change. I'm going to take one day off a week. And I'm going to make sure that four nights a week I come home and I stay home. And they were real excited about it. They believed me. Uh, they, thought I could, they, they thought I would do it. Uh, and when I got home from the vacation, I stood in front of my congregation. And I confessed to them that I had dropped the ball as a dad. And I had dropped the ball as a husband. And I had, I had let my ministry in the church take over my life. I let bound, I wasn't taking a Sabbath. I wasn't being responsible. The first day I come home on a dad home night, I walked through the garage door into the breezeway where the laundry room was. And I didn't know it, but my youngest son was standing on top of the washing machine waiting for me. And I walked in, he jumped on my back and he just started saying, it's a dad home night, dad. You're not going back to work, right? And I said, no, buddy, I'm staying home. And he says, oh, great. We're going to play. We're going to hang out. Yes, we are. And we, all three boys stayed at home. We hung out and had a great time every single day that it's a dad home night for the next three or four weeks. Nate is on the washing machine ready to surprise me. And finally, after about three or four weeks, I come walking in waiting for my son to land on my back. And he doesn't, he's not there. I look at the washing machine, he's gone. And I said, it's a dad home night. <laughs> Why aren't they here? And she, she looked at me and she says, well, I told him it was a dad home night. And they all said, well, dad's always here. And, and th at that moment, I realized that God had redeemed my broken choices. And I think the lesson for me is that need to examine your own heart as a leader, to examine how am I really doing, to be honest with yourself. The next week after I got started on this whole new chapter in my life and after my wife wrote on the board, Dad Home Night, uh, I got a call from somebody who really needed to meet with me and I looked at my calendar and I saw one of my nights that was a Dad Home Night and it seemed really important so I actually erased, I erased my Dad Home Night and I wrote in a meeting with someone else. I hung up the phone and I kind of went on for five or ten minutes and the Holy Spirit said, do you see how easy that was for you? It shouldn't be that easy. I called the person back. And, and here's the beauty as a pastor. I called him back and said, you know what? I realized I had another commitment that night. I apologize. Can we find another time to meet? And we found another time. And this is one of the little lessons I learned that, that I can say to somebody, you know, I have another commitment that night. I don't have to, I don't have to tell them what I'm doing. I don't have to tell them I'm playing with my boys or I'm hanging out with my wife. I have another commitment at that time. I can't do it. And we found another time. Out of all of this experience, 
Uh, God gave me an opportunity to write a book called Leadership from the Inside Out. It's based on Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. And leading from the inside out. And, and that actually comes out of another life lesson uh, that uh, has really impacted me. And that is uh, I've battled with skin cancer for the last almost 20 years. I've had nine or ten surgeries on my face and my back removing skin. Thankfully, uh, nothing, nothing malignant. So far, it's been basal cell and squamous cell. But every, every year I go to the doctor, he examines my skin, and he tells me if he needs to free something off or cut something out or do whatever he's got to do. And actually, shortly before filming this, I went for another checkup, and I've got a whole year now that I get to wait before I have anything cut off my face or my back, so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, but my, my skin doctor actually taught me a great lesson in leadership. He was looking at my skin, and he was actually teaching me how to watch my skin, to watch for changes and problems. And my skin doctor looked at me, and he said, his name is Jack Decking, he's been a great friend through the years. He looked at me and he said, uh, Kevin, if you identify a problem when it's small and come to me and we deal with it, it's not a big deal. But if you ignore it and that small problem becomes big, he looked at me totally serious. He said, it could kill you. He said, when it's small, deal with it then. I had the lights go off in my brain. That's what led me to write Leadership from the Inside Out, to look at the small problems and deal with them then. In my life, maybe it wasn't even a small problem. My problem was I was letting my schedule get out of control. But it hadn't gone so far that it hadn't gone so far that it had damaged my children, and, and by God's grace, by turning that around and addressing that, it didn't become a big thing. It became a redemptive moment. When you see something that's not right, make it right. Especially for us pastors with our schedules, don't let your schedule get out of control. Don't let it take over your life. Honor God. Honor your wife if you're married. Honor your children, and give glory to Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, I pray for these leaders that are listening. I thank you with them for those moments that we realize we've been out of line and your grace is enough for us too as leaders. And you forgive us, you give us new beginnings. And I pray that all of us would be attentive to our schedules, to our marriages, to our families, to time with you, Jesus. Let us keep a healthy balance and a rhythm of life in how we manage our schedules. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. There are over 600,000 pastors in America. Half feel the demand of their calling is just too much. Over 30% feel the needs of the church go before the needs of the family. This Sunday, more than 400 pastors will resign because the role is just too overwhelming. We know that's not healthy, but hope is not lost. That's why we created Hope and Health Workshop. In this one-day workshop, you'll learn from an experienced coach Find the clarity you need to help your ministry spread like wildfire and leave with practical tools that will unlock the secret to a healthy career in ministry. Your best days as a local church pastor are ahead.